who is listening today to what God has to speak to your heart. Today I'm here with a wonderful insight on prayer with burden. You know, when you're burdened, how do you pray? Are you able to pray when you're burdened? A prayer of burden, how does that attract the heart of God? If you are so burdened that you cannot pray, hold on, I have news for you. Jesus can pray for you. The Holy Spirit can pray for you because your burden is translated by the Holy Spirit into groans and you are made light. This is a process. How do we cast our burden on Jesus? How do you carry your burden and how do you cast your burden into Jesus' hands? Can that happen through prayer? Stay with me and watch and be blessed. My dear brothers and sisters, today I'm here with a definite word for everybody who's watching with me and who feels burdened. Now tell me, who in this world does not have a burden to carry? Right from the time a child is born into this world, the mother carries a burden, but the burden is joy and wholesome. When the baby comes out, there is complete joy. There's complete joy. The Bible says there's sorrow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. My dear friends, if you have a burden that is too heavy to, to carry, I want to tell you in the spirit of the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, who is famous for making his children feel light and free of any sorrow, that he himself will lift your burden even as he you are listening to this sermon. It's not because the preacher is saying it, it's because God's purpose is that your burden, his, his yoke is easy and that his burden in you is light. Now, there are burdens that we carry in our lives. There's a burden that everybody is carrying. There is a weight that everybody is carrying. Is the weight a good weight or a bad weight? We all have a weight in our body, we have a weight in our soul, we have a weight in our mind. When you, when you have a very uh, you know, weighty mind, that means carnality has taken over us and that we are very puffed up and high-minded. When we are meek and gentle and slow in understanding the exact purposes of God with His time and with His counsel, we are just as meek as the Holy Spirit is. Our God does not want us to rush and push. He wants us to be moderate with time, modest with time. He wants us to be balanced with time. You know, burden should be balanced. We should have a good burden to carry. That means, he says, he calls that as yoke, easy. Because the reason why a burden is also called as a yoke is because a burden, you, you normally think about an, a beast, an animal that carries burden. Let's talk about a donkey that carries a burden, the beast that carries a burden. Now, when the donkey carries a burden, it carries the burden which is just placed upon it. It doesn't have an option. It is placed upon a person, regardless of their desire, regardless of their free will, regardless of their opinion, regardless of what they want to say, think, and feel. It's just a burden somebody wants to put over somebody. That is a burden. However, when it comes to the word called yoke, you know, you see the cattle 
it has an equal yoke with its partner, the other cattle. So they're always a pair. A yoke is always placed on a pair, which means there's a balance in the burden. So I want to talk to you about why balance is very important in burden. So you know what is the burden you got to carry? What is the burden you have to leave it to Jesus? What is the burden that you got to carry? And is that a healthy burden? Does that benefit the kingdom of God? And what is the burden that you need to give into the hands of God? There's a beautiful psalm that's talking exactly about this burden. Now, when the animal bows down to have the yoke placed upon its, its shoulder over its neck, it is willing and the master knows what yoke should actually go into it, what kind of a structure, the wooden structure, how much weight that beast can carry. They place a yoke equally on the cattle, on the pair of cattle that's going to have the yoke. Yoke is a willing burden. But a burden is just a mass, a heavy burden that is compulsively placed on a person. Yoke is a willing burden. A marriage is a, is a beautiful partnership. It's a beautiful communion. It's a beautiful fellowship of two people coming together with a blessed yoke, a divine yoke, a God-ordained yoke, let's say. It's a beautiful burden. It is a burden, but it's a divine burden of two people coming in together to fulfill the purposes of God on this earth. What is the burden that you're carrying today? Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it heavenward? Is it earthbound? Turn with me your Bibles to Psalm chapter 55. This is a psalm that just addresses this one thing. Cast your burden on the Lord. That means pray and give it to the Lord. If you are carrying a burden, pray and give it to the Lord. Give ear to my prayer, O God. That's the first line. And do not hide yourself from my supplication. This was David's prayer. I want to tell you a little bit about the kind of prayers that David did so that you would know exactly what lines was he interceding on and what is it that we got to note in order for us to intercede as well on those lines. Because he had the privilege of and the anointing of singing over the instruments, playing the instruments and singing together, he had the great privilege of doing, you know, things called muscle, you know, and there are also mahalat, muscle, Hegeon, Selah. These are four different kinds of music that is produced by the words, the poems that he brought out. It talks about the burden that he was, you know, David was talking about the burden of the Lord. He was saying what kind of burden he had and how he left it in the hands of God. 55 verse 1 says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. So he was having God give all years to his prayer. And then he says, David's prayer was for attention of God, one thing. The first thing was he was praying for God's divine attention. Jesus Christ, Father God, attend to my prayer. So he asks his limitations to be overcome by God's unlimited supply of power so that he can pray because prayer cannot happen unless there is power being given to us to pray. Nobody can pray until they have the power to pray. So today ask for power to pray. Power belongs only to God. Power is God's own kingdom. It is his own name. It is his banner. 
power and glory and majesty and sovereignty, excellence, everything belongs to God. If you want to pray, you got power to pray. You need power to pray. It's not an ordinary joke to get up and just pray. Nobody can be prompted to pray unless they have the power. If you have a prompting to pray, there is power over you to pray. So you got to use that power to pray. And it says, attend to me and hear me. I'm restless in my complaint. Because he's carrying a burden, he said, I'm restless. Look at the way. I just want to turn your focus into how David narrates the way he's carrying a burden to God. This is how conversational each and every one of us should get to God. God, see, I'm traveling on this trans I'm just I'm just, you know, traveling on this journey of life and I'm carrying too many burden. See, the last 12 years was like this. The next 5 years, I suppose in my degree of analysis, this is how it could be. I'm thinking about my career. I'm thinking about my future. I'm thinking about my children. I'm thinking about everything possible. I'm thinking about the church. I'm thinking about the purposes that you have for me on this earth. You have a lot of burden. Now, come on, is that light? Is that heavy? Is that good? Is that bad? Everything needs to be given to God on a day-to-day -day conversation basis, which is what David did. So he said in verse 3, he says, Lord, See, I have a fear of the voice of the enemy because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me and in wrath they hate me. So he complains to God. All these are his burden. However, you know, what he did different was when we have a burden, we just withdraw from prayers. We just, you know, like a snail withdraws. We just cut off people. We just cut off territories. We just cut off churches. We just cut off fellowships. We abruptly just withdraw because of the vexation in our spirit. Because we see some people are given things and they're enjoying and you have always not enjoyed what others are enjoying because of which you don't feel like you want to pray. Now, is that burden weighing you too heavy? The Bible says, cast your burden unto the Lord. That's exactly what David was doing. He was casting his burden. I'm going to take you right there, okay? And then it says, My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. So when you have, when you face death itself, like Paul said, I face death every day in my body. That's what Paul said. We are beaten down, we are struck down, inflicted with sickness, in everything, the outward is perishing, but the inward, the inward is being renewed. I want to tell you something. When you cast your burden on God, listen to this beautiful insight, what happens. Thank you, God. When you cast your burden on God, what happens is your soul gets refreshed. You know what happens when you pray in the invisible, as your prayers are being received by God, he assigns his angels that they will release his purpose of refreshing you. You will be granted strength. When Daniel prayed, he was trembling when he had an encounter with the, with the angel. Outward, he was trembling, but inside he was gaining strength. Ezekiel was gaining strength as he encountered the angel. All of the prophets, they almost lost their you know, countenance when they saw angels, when they were being refreshed. Outside, they were getting weary because in the physical, there couldn't be, you know, a possibility of seeing something divine, seeing God and God sent ones and living. So their countenance outside was trembling, but inside they were gaining strength. We see in the book of Daniel, we see in the book of Ezekiel, how the Lord refreshed their spirit and said, don't you worry, you are being refreshed. He refreshes them as they give their burden to the Lord. And what is the burden which is inside of you? As you give it to the Lord, the Lord makes it a blessing. The Lord sees that what you carry, you must cast at the feet of God. If what you're carrying is a burden, Cast it at the feet of God. Cast it into the hands of God. Cast it to the Lord. We all remember singing this right from our Sunday schools. Cast your burden unto the Lord for He cares for you. I want to add to you to that word in your life to say, when you cast, 
I want to add to that insight. When you cast your burden on the Lord, what happens is He refreshes you. He gives you something in exchange. You become empty of a heavy weight and a heavy load and you yourself are refreshed. When you pray, now this is for your prayers, okay? This is for your burden. Now let me hang on. I'm going to tell you something else, a, a good insight. When you pray for others, what happens is you lift them of their burden that they are carrying. So what do you do? In other words, you are refreshing someone else by praying for them. So there's a living water inside everybody who speaks the name and the power of Jesus Christ. So when you speak the power of Jesus, when you begin to pray with power of the Holy Spirit, you become refreshed yourselves. When you pray for others, you're refreshing their spirits so wherever in the territory they are, wherever on earth they are, wherever they are, God would send power in that place because there is power in prayer. Because prayer involves a person. You are praying to a living God. You are praying to somebody who can answer you. You are praying with power. You are praying to a person. You are praying to the person who is living and not the dead. So you bring something alive from the presence of God. There is grace in that place. There is grace in praying. So what happens is as you narrate everything to the Lord, you it's not just a complaint it is handing over first you carry the burden and then you cast the burden you you cast what you're carrying that is the best way to handle the course of life life keeps throwing at us different circumstances different encounters that we have from day to day time to time every phase of our life faces us with something expected unexpected suspected not suspected however the only eternal sovereign one is the lord jesus christ to the only one god and jesus christ and the holy spirit that is invisible immortal all sovereign to him belong the glory the power and the dominion forevermore they have said the word and that is the final word when you pray whole of heaven says amen that's the final word when you pray there is power so i'm telling you my heart is he says in verse 4 my heart is severely pained within me you might want to see this as a complaint but the way david is doing it is he casts it as a burden fearfulness and trembling have come upon me look at this do you face this or not narrated to the lord bring your burden to the lord just speak to the lord say father this month I have this huge amount to close as a loan. This could be prophetic for someone. Lord, I have to handle this whole thing as a surgery in the hospital. Lord, there's my son's wedding popping up and I'm just sitting with expectancy of what's going to happen. Maybe my, your situation is still not there. It has no way of trending to where you think it should cast your burden on the Lord this is the way David did he was saying every single thing he said Lord I come with fear and trembling horror has overwhelmed me I said oh that I had a wings like a dove for then I would fly away and be at rest and he said I wish I could go to the wilderness day and night they go around it on its walls Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of the city. And he keeps saying in verse 13, But it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, and my acquaintance. Lord, if there is someone else who is troubling me, that is okay. But if I'm afflicted by you, my sweet companion, to who else can I go and share this burden? This is how conversational he gets with God. God wants you to sit and converse with him. God wants you to sit and commune with him the burden that you carry. There is a deep exchange that happens when you commune with God. It's not just taking, you know, the blood and the body. It's talking to him what you bear in your blood. It's talking to him what you bear in your body. So his body for your exchange 
his blood for your blood, there's a divine exchange as you give away your burden to the Lord. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throng. And then he goes on to say in verse 16, As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Now, this is the main thing. So when you have a burden, when do you pray? This particular verse in 17, Psalm 55 verse 17 says, Evening and morning and at noon. Evening and morning and at noon. I will pray and cry aloud. If you have a burden, make this as your choice today. Make this as your decision today. Evening and morning and noon. I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. This is a deep conviction that comes once you surrendered your burden. In the first 16 verses, you see how he casts his burden on the Lord, knowing that God will care for him. He knows the person to whom he's talking. He says, Lord, even if you have afflicted me, it's okay, I wanna tell you how I feel afflicted. I wanna tell you because you're my sweet friend. That's what he says. He said, we took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the congregation, which means he lived a life where he was walking with God. That's what, that's what God told of him, a man after my own heart. Look at that verse that says, he walked to the house of God in the throng in our sweet counsel together. Are you in a sweet counsel together? Am I in a sweet counsel together as we exchange the burden? When you exchange your burden for the burden of God, you will be satisfied in your weary soul. You yourself will be refreshed. The Bible says, the one who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. So if you're praying for someone, the other word is you are refreshing somebody. When you are prayed for, you are being refreshed. When you pray for yourself, you are refreshing yourself. God wants you to pray. Prayer is a refreshment. These are Prayers of refreshment, prayer of burden becomes, when you pray for your burden, the outcome is refreshment. That's exactly today's, the crux of today's message. When you pray with a burden, you receive refreshment because your prayer is directed towards a living God. And then he talks, he says, I will pray and cry aloud morning now evening and at noon and he shall hear my voice look at that word and it says he has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle which was against me for there were many against me and he was he's very affirmed and acknowledged in verse 19 he says god will hear and afflict them even he who abides from of old because they do not change therefore they do not fear god he has put forth his battle he has put forth his his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. And then it says in verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved, but you, O God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half the days, but I will trust in you. Why will I trust in you? Because in verse 22, there's a very deep acknowledgement. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. This is the God that you and I serve. It says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And this is exactly what it says in Psalm 37 as well. This adds to the flavor of what David was talking. Psalm 37 talks about how to rest in the Lord, refresh your spirit in the Lord. It says in Psalm 37 verse five, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday and rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. So this is exactly what the Lord says to each and every one of us today. It says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. God is working in your life. God is working. He's working vehemently. He's working fast at God's speed in your life. When you cast your burden onto the hands of the Lord, he refreshes you. If you are weary, if you are worried, give your burden to the Lord. Just begin a conversation with the Lord. Begin a communion with the Lord. Begin that fellowship with God. As you begin to speak to God, He lifts off the heaviness. He gives you your yoke easy and burden light. And as it says in Nahum 2, 3, And now I will take the yoke from their shoulders and tear their shackles away. God is taking the yoke from your shoulder. He's tearing He's breaking open the shackles and he's refreshing your weary soul. May the Lord Jesus bless you according to this word. Thank you, Father God, that you are removing the burden from your children. Whatever burden they're carrying right now, Lord, that you will minister to each one's heart and you will break their bondages and you will set the captives free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.